Hello viewers, how are you? Welcome to my channel Physics with Raj. So today we are going to discuss about calorimetry. So before going to start this topic, those who are new to my channel, please subscribe my channel so that you can receive notifications regarding my channel, as well as you can clear all concepts and you can solve as many numericals as you can. So let's start this topic. Calorimetry. What is meant by calorimetry means? Huh? So, when heat is being transferred from hot body to cold body, the amount of heat transferred from one body to another body is being measured by using this calorimetry. So, calorimetry is a nothing but it's a process of calculating the amount of heat transferred from one body to another body. Or here we use a device in order to measure the flow of heat is a calorimeter. So, calorimeter is the device which is used to measure the amount of heat transferred from hot body to cold body. So, here when heat is being transferred from hot body to cold body, also that hot body loses the heat, whereas cold body gains the heat. So, here the concept is when a body loses heat, when a body loses heat, then we can represent that heat lost by the body is equal to heat gained by the body. So based on this itself, we discuss about this calorie matter. Come in the case, here we consider two states. One is when a body gains a temperature on gaining the heat, then we represent it as a specific heat. So in a specific heat condition, body gains the temperature. Body gains the temperature on absorbing the heat. So the amount of heat transferred in the case of a specific heat is represented as Mc into delta. Where delta T is a change in the temperature. C is a specific heat, M is mass of the substance. So, and it is defined as the amount of heat required by 1 gram of substance to raise its temperature by 1 degree Celsius is known as a specific heat. Whereas a specific heat can be represented with the units of calorie per gram and joule per kg, where 1 calorie per gram equals to 4200 joules per kg. And the next one is latent heat. So, when the state of the body changes by absorbing the heat, just like observe that ice converts into water, as well as water converts into vapor at different temperatures. We know that ice converts into water at 0 degrees Celsius, and water converts into vapor at 100 degrees Celsius. So, as you observe that at these temperatures, the amount of heat is being transferred, whereas the amount of heat transferred in this case is represented as Q equals to ML, where M is the mass of the substance, Q is heat transferred, L is latent heat. Here we have two types of latent heat, one is a latent heat of fusion, and the second one is a latent heat of vaporization. When is a latent heat of fusion is represented when ice converts into water, means solid converts into liquid. So, or liquids converts into solid. Here the value of latent heat of fusion is 80 calorie per gram for water. And its value is 3.35 to 10 to the power of 5 joule per kg. And latent heat of vaporization is 540 calorie per gram. And its value is 2.26 into 10 to the power of 5 joule per kg. These are the values given for latent heat of fusion and latent heat of vaporization. Answer that once again, heat lost by a body is equals to heat gained by the body. 
Take a screenshot. We will continue. So let's solve the problem based on this uh, heat loss and heat gain concept, calorimetry. Nothing but. So also that one gram of steam at 100 degrees Celsius is passed into an insulating vessel having one gram of ice at zero degrees Celsius. Now we have to find the equilibrium temperature of the mixture. Also that the amount, according to principle of calorimetry, heat loss by a body is equal to heat gain. Heat loss by a body is equal to heat gain. Also that steam has lost the heat whereas ice has gained the heat. So now let's represent this. We know that in the case of steam, the heat loss by the body is represented as ml because it is being converted from steam into water by giving away the heat present to that steam. So now mass of the steam is 1 gram, 1 into latent data of vaporization is 540 calorie per gram nothing but amount of heat transferred is 540 calories whereas uh, here we had represented heat loss by body whereas other than heat gain is equal to mass of the ice into latent heat of ice nothing but latent heat of a fusion plus mass of the water as it converts into water into specific heat of water and change in the temperature. So now here as you observe that mass of the ice is 1 gram and we know that uh, latent heat of uh, fusion is 80 calorie per gram plus mass of the ice nothing but when it had converted into water it remains 1 itself and specific heat is 1. As you observe that here 540 calories of steam heat is being transferred to this 1 gram of ice. So, automatically based on this heat, it will attain the maximum temperature. So, we can represent the change in the temperature as 100 minus 0. So, here observe that 80 plus 100 minus 0 is 100. So, we get 180 calories. So, heat gained by the body is 180 calories. Heat lost by the body is 540 calories. So, based on that, we can represent that they achieve the maximum temperature. Nothing but 100 degree Celsius. So, now observe that as the steam loses heat, some of the steam will convert into water. Let's find out how much mass of steam has been converted into water. So, for that, let us consider x grams of steam has been converted into water. So, x into 540 is equal to 180. Then, x equals to 180 by 540. Also, that 0 gets cancelled. 18 ones are 18 threes. So, 1 by 3 grams of steam has been converted into water. It has been converted into water. So, remaining steam is a steam left x dash equals 1 gram of steam minus 1 by 3. So, remaining steam is 2 by 3 times. So, remaining steam present within this uh, mixture is 2 by 3 times. Take a screenshot, we will continue. After the next question, how much steam at 100 degrees Celsius is to be passed into water of mass 100 grams at 20 degrees Celsius to rise its temperature by 5 degrees Celsius. So here, after that, when we consider water, initially the temperature of the water is 20 degrees Celsius. We had raised the temperature by 5 degrees Celsius. So final temperature, nothing but intermediate temperature is T3 is equal to 20 plus 5, nothing but 25 degrees Celsius. 25 degrees Celsius. So, the intermediate temperature. When, when we add mixed with steam and water, the medium temperature is 25 degrees Celsius. So, here mass of the water is 100 grams. 
and we know that the mass of the steam has to be represented initially we had maintained the steam's temperature at 100 degrees celsius so let us consider it as a t1 t1 equals to 100 degrees celsius whereas a t2 is a 20 degrees celsius now we have to find out the mass of the steam in order to increase the temperature from 20 degrees celsius to 25 degrees celsius so let us consider the same condition principle of calorimetry according to principle of calorimetry heat lost by the body is equal to heat gained as a that steam has lost the heat so initially it is in the form of steam so we represent based on latent heat mass of the steam into latent heat of vaporization plus mass of the steam into specific heat of water into change in the temperature this represents heat loss by the steam condition which is equal to why because as it absorbs as the heat is being transferred to the water this steam converts into water so now heat gained by the water is nothing but observe that mass of the water into specific heat of water into change in the temperature change in the temperature so now observe that the mass of steam is m suffixes if we take it as a latent heat of vaporization is 540 plus specific heat of water is 1 into change in the temperature is t1 minus t3 nothing but 100 minus 25 is equal to mass of the water is 100 into specific heat of water is 1 calorie per gram degree celsius into change in the temperature is 25 minus 20 so now as you have that mass of the steam is equal to 540 plus 100 minus 25 is 75 which is equal to 100 into 5, nothing but 500. So now mass of the steam is equal to 500 by, observe that 540 plus 75, nothing but 650. So when we saw this here, we get 0 0.813 grams. So observe that the steam required in order to increase the temperature of water is 0 0.813 grams. Take a screenshot, we will continue. Observe the next question. A calorimeter of heat capacity 83.72 joule per kelvin contains 0 0.48 kg of water at 35 degrees Celsius. Now we have to represent how much of ice at 0 degree Celsius should be handled to decrease the temperature of calorimeter to 20 degree Celsius. Also that initial temperature of the calorimeter along with water is 35. We have to decrease the temperature to 20 degree Celsius. So now actually we know that the heat capacity is represented as a delta Q by delta T. Where delta T is a change in the temperature. Based on that here we can represent a delta Q is equal to h into delta t where h is a 83.72 83.72 into change in the temperature is a 35 minus 20 so here we get a 83.72 into 15 so how is that 5 to the 10 let's uh, multiply this 5 to the 10 1 5 7 is 35, 36, 3, 5 3 is 15, 18, 8 5 7, 40, 41, next 2 7, 3, 8, 0, 8, 15, 4, 5, 12. So when we place a decimal point here, we get 1255.8 chunks of heat is being transferred. So, this is the amount of heat lost by the calorimeter. Now, according to principle of calorimetry, we know that heat lost by the body is equal to heat gained. Observe that calorimeter as well as 
water has no slide then also that uh, heat lost by calorimeter plus heat lost by water is equal to heat gained by ice heat gained by the ice so now also that heat lost by calorimeter is 1255.8 plus heat gained by water heat gained by water is mass of the water is a 0.48 into specific heat of water is 4200 joule per kg into change in the temperature is 35 minus 20 equals to heat gained by the ice whereas the mass of the ice is m suffix i and the latent heat of ice is represented as 3.35 into 10 to the power of 5 joules plus mass of the ice into mass of the ice into specific heat 4200 into change in the temperature 20 minus 0 so this is the heat lost by the body and this represents heat gained by the body so now as you observe that 1255.8 plus 4200 into 0 0.48 nothing but 48 into 42 into 15 is equal to when we take mass of the ice as common we have 3.35 into 10 to the power of 5 plus 4200 into 20 4200 into 20 so now observe that 48 into 42 8 is 16 4 is 8 9 4 is 32 4 4 is 16 19 6 11 0 2 so now 2016 into 15 so 5 6 is 30 next 5 plus 3 8 0 5 to 0 10 6 1 0 2 so here we get 8 by 6 14 2 0 3 so observe that 3 0 2 4 0 12 55.8 plus 3 0 2 4 0 which always is equal to mass of the ice into 3.35 into 10 to the power of 5 nothing but 3 3 5 1, 2, 3 plus 4200 into 20. Nothing but 2 to the 4, 4 to the 8. 8, 4, 0, 0, 0. So now when we add these two, answer that 1255, 1255.8 plus 3, 0, 2, 4, 0. So 8, 5, 9, 4, 1, 3. So here we get a 31495.8 is equal to mass of the ice into 5 plus 4 is a 9, 8 plus 3 is 11, 4. Then here we get a mass of the ice is equal to 31495.8 by 419300 which is equal to 0.075 kg so this is the amount of mass of ice required in this condition so that we can decrease the temperature of calorimeter and water to 20 degrees Celsius. take a screenshot Please give a like to this video, share this video to your friends and don't forget to subscribe to my channel.